But then you could hear uh, our commander screaming. And then they moved us all into the bunker along the back because they were still mortaring. And you could hear him screaming. And I had my hands over my ears. I'm like, God, just fucking stop. You know, just stop. That was the most horrible screaming I'd ever heard. So you come back, you're getting ready for Somalia. Somalia kicks off. Can you kind of walk us through what that was like? Yeah. It's the hardest shit I ever did. 30 years later, right? Yeah. Fucking hits me. Um, yeah, the first five missions were like, you know, no shit. Let's go. It's fucking, we're America, man. We win everything. We're the good guys, right? Um, and you go in there, and the first five missions were just making noise, shooting at me, you know, not even shooting at people. You hear bullets flying back and forth, and we win the day, right? Um, the fourth hit, or the fifth hit, was auto. Osman Otto, and uh, that was one of those, you know, they hit the, the guys hit the ground. We were supposed to circle the top again. I'm like, fuck, I hate circling the helicopter, you know, and I went on the ground. And then a gunfight broke out, so we roped right into the intersection and, and just took off. And I, I remember there was a machine gun nest a block up, and me and my buddy hit, our whole team hit the ground, but me and my buddy were like, looked at each other, like, near ambush. Fuck that up. It was a far ambush, right? Near ambush, rush it. So we start rushing down this this alleyway with walls on both sides, nowhere to get out of the way. And bullets are just skipping off the ground, man, around us. And I'm, I remember running thinking, and the guy in front of me is taller than I was. And I remember thinking, oh, as soon as he gets hit and goes down, I'm next, man. It's just waiting for that. Finally found our, our, ourselves to a spot and opened up and took out that nest and shit. And that was just one of those, okay, that amped it up a bit. And I think I took somebody's life on Xfil from the second floor. He was getting ready to shoot at our helicopter on the third floor, and, and I, I, I shot him. He didn't see me. Um, and that was like my first, like, whoa, no shit. Like, I looked at him across the street, and he, he didn't look at me. He had no idea I was there. And drilled him right in the head, and he just pff, fell back. Gun falls out the window. I'm like, holy shit. You know, like, fuck. I'm calling for my team leader. I'm like, Pete, Pete, you see that shit? I just shot that fucker in the face. He goes, all right, good job. Keep doing your job. I'm like, fuck, this guy doesn't get excited about shit. <laughs> you know, and then uh, you go back and you're like, man, that was scary as shit still. But here we are. We made it. Yeah, we won again. And then 3 October, you know, there, that's, that, that's when everything changed. When um, right on infill, getting shot at and RPGs through the helicopters and getting shot at and guy falls 90 feet. You know, you hear that on the radio. We got infilled outside of the perimeter. So we had to take a house down under fire and fight our way in. Um, grabbed all the detainees, moved them, getting ready to exfil them, and then the, the, the five-ton gets hit with an RPG and blows up. And then, and then a ranger sitting next to a gate, just taking a break, his neck explodes. I'm like, fuck, this is growing. And then I hear an RPG, and I look up, and I see the helicopter spinning out of control off to the west. I'm like, fuck me. You know? And I'm still trying to make jokes. Like, we're going to make a home for dinner, right? Like, still dinner, right? You know, I didn't bring night vision. I didn't bring water. I didn't bring shit. In and out in an hour. That's what we were always at. Uh, ended up fighting our way down the street, you know, um, to the crash site. And then spent 18 hours there that whole night. It was just, uh, that's when I, I mean, it was hell on earth. I, I don't know even how to explain it to people who won't just, it's wasted on people who don't have a clue, right? I guess to, to not to interrupt, um, to compare it to the way the movie depicts it, how, how would you contrast it? Hmm. You know, when you watch the movie after being there, you're like, oh, it's kind of funny. I didn't see half that shit. And, you know, and they were like, yeah. was all that true? And I go, I don't know. I mean, Maybe. some of that was true because I, I, I was, of course, war scenes are all similar and the same. I mean, you shop an RPG. What country was that? And it's all the same. Um, it caught the chaos. It caught um, probably some of the humor and it caught the fear, I think. Um, could it ever really, you know, show somebody what it's like? No. It's, but I think it, it got close. I've been able to watch it since the first time I watched it. I, I've tried with Jen a couple of times, and it's one of those things I get into. Like She's like, you sure you want to watch it? I'm like, yeah, it just popped up. You know, fuck it. Let's watch this shit. And I know those people, so it's not a movie to me. It's a reenactment. I just I just kind of break down and can't do it because yeah. it's a lot of loss in one, you know, one day. Yeah. Did, uh, did the movie, from your perspective, I know it's been a while since you've watched it, did it miss anything that – stands out like you know yeah the movie was told from a ranger perspective um couldn't really talk to you know delta guys about it um there was a couple that were involved due to them getting out but it was mostly ranger stories so a lot of the people in the movie are are doing scenes as a ranger that unit guys did 
you know, so that one guy might do three things that three people did, you know, just to kind of catch it. Or the Rangers saw an event happen. So they're trying to depict that in the movie as what they think happened. So they missed a lot of, um, like, internal shit from our, from our unit's perspective, what we did up on the front edge of that because they were kind of behind. Can you share any of that? Um, there was a lot of animosity about why we weren't out in the street, all of us, you know, and I think it was a leadership breakdown that, that, that was the, the scuttle <laughs> back in the day. You know, I don't want to get into that because I'm, I'm not the guy. I was a young kid then. My job is to break shit and shoot people, man. I wasn't in charge of anything. Hearing the stories down the road years later and talking to people, it was like, yeah, there was a breakdown. There was some people screaming, you know, cowardice and, and poor leadership on the other side. But, um, you know, I wasn't down there, right? I wasn't down there. I didn't see it. And I've learned to talk about what I did and what I saw happen. But other than that, not to guess because that's someone else's opinion possibly. But a lot of talk about the breakdown in leadership and how we could have used more people out on the street versus just the few that we had that were going out and doing things. Like when my team leader's like, hey, we need someone to run ammo across the street. I'm like, fuck. Hey, we need someone to run water across the street. I'm like, fuck, I hate being the new guy, you know? I was a new guy, but there was a newer guy. But he got blown up, so he's laying in the living room, you know, recovering. I'm the guy running across the street under fire. like, fuck, being the new guy sucks, you know? And where's, where's the younger, the lower-ranking people? Where are those yeah. guys at? They were down the street. But um, they didn't talk about that. I don't, I don't think that that was a story that was told. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's a story people want to tell, right? It makes us look bad versus real. But I think they captured um, most of it, I think. you know, yeah. I don't think they captured the anger after. You're flying a deed around in airplanes and shit and, like, back to negotiations. And, you know, of course you're pissed off, you know. Yeah. But that's our job. Yeah. Yeah, that 18-hour period that you guys were – I'm not going to say pinned down, but in, in one area. No, we are pinned down. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have left if I could. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, Loadout-wise, you didn't have water, you didn't have night vision. Armament-wise, what were you guys carrying, and, and what was your loadout mag-wise? Like, were you similarly lightly loaded down? Basic load, 210 rounds, 5.56. Five, uh -huh. I probably had five 45 magazines, you know, one, one in and you know, four on my hip. And I, I carried a shotgun, too like a little shotgun. So I had that ammo going for me as well. Um, that was it. That's typical what people had. Some had sniper rifles, but I mean, most of us had kind of the similar thing. Some guys would have 203s and things like that, but it's kind of it. Everybody carries their grenades and whatnot, but yeah, 210, basic loads all went in with. I mean, we were, back in the day, it was one of those, in and out, man. Yeah. We're the unit, bro. We, in and out, man. You know, and then boom. You're like, fuck, we weren't ready for that. You yeah. know, it's one of those, uh, it's a big learning moment. A real big learning moment, I think, for a lot of the Army and definitely for us. For me, you know, um, maybe the unit was repeating things, I don't know. But for me, it was one of those, whoa, don't have helicopters hover overhead. It's kind of like telling everybody where you're at, mm -hmm. you know, and plus there's somebody to shoot down there. You know, bring your nods, bring water. Don't ever think you're going to go in and out. There's always prepare for the worst, you know. It's one of those, um, we're, we're hostage rescue people, man, you know. We don't stick around. But when you don't think about the option that, that might be taken from you. You know, the enemy has a vote. Yeah. We were just kind of stuck and we unprepared, I, you know, at my age at then I would say we were unprepared. I don't think anybody would argue that. Yeah. When, uh, during that period, were there, uh, waves of, of gunfights? Uh, was it like, can you, can you kind of go through the, that that period uh and i know we don't have time to spend 18 hours talking about it but uh, <laughs> there but were waves it was um you could hear the 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 commander in the air flying around telling us you know our isr telling us hey there's a huge group of people forming on the outskirts of town they're loading in vehicles oh they're heading your way and you're like fuck you know and you'd hear that all night long and then there'd be a wave of people going through and shooting at you and and launching RPGs and trying to sneak up on you, and then that would kind of go away a little bit. You'd notice the volume was trickling down. At one point, two dudes walking down the street right into the middle of our intersection. Me and my buddy were laying at the gate, and he's like, Jake's like, hey, look at those fuckers. You know, you could barely see them. One had an AK over his shoulder. They're just chatting like they forgot where we were. He's like, what, what the fuck do we do? He's like, I'm going to light them up, you know, with this flashlight. And he lit them up. 
and just to make him do something because we won't shoot anybody unless it's a threat. And he just had his gun over his shoulder, right? Yeah, I mean, right? <laughs> so he lights him up with the flashlight so that dude pulls his weapon off his shoulder because that's what I would do. And then we lit him up. You know? And then one guy took off running. And I ran to the next window to try to shoot him. And he's, he's dropping the guy in the street. And it was one of those, they just keep coming, man. They're on cot. They're drugged out. And they're just rounding them up out of town. They're bringing them in. And they, whether they know what they're doing or not, I don't know. But giving them weapons and coming at us. It just kept coming in waves after wave of the volume would pick up. You know, the house was getting broken down by RPGs as they would get close enough to hit the house and tear down that wall. And I'm thinking, fuck, the next one's coming into the living room, man, you know? So, yeah, those waves kept coming to the point of, um, I asked my team leader one time, uh, you could hear the convoy trying to make it to you as well with the 50 cows roaring and you could hear the gunfire coming at them. And, and I said, hey, are they going to make it? He just looked at me. He's like, I don't know. And he turned and walked out. I'm like, there goes my fucking team leader again. Yeah, no motivational speech at all. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Just yeah. the truth. Just always just the truth. I don't know. And that's the moment I was like, well, all right. Okay. And I got happier. Like, fuck it. I'm yeah. dead. Right? I'm dead. So let's just go. Right? It was kind of like that fear was gone. Like, uh, yeah, you're going to die. So let's just do as much as you can while you're alive. Wow. That had to be a, a sobering moment life-wise and, and one that, that changes your perspective forever, I imagine. Yeah, to this day. Yeah. To this very moment. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it ruined me. Yeah. The, uh, the waves, I mean, it sounds reminiscent of like the fucking Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially like they're doped up on cotton. They're just, they're almost fucking zombie like mental state wise. Is that kind of what it was like? It's just like these, these waves of fucking erratic people that, that are walking into being mowed down. Yeah. And, and I kept wondering like, why are they, why do they continue to come? Do they not see the first group of people? You know, you so shoot people and you'd see your tracers going through them and they just kept coming. And I'm like, it's like, are we not hitting the right spots? I mean, are they so skinny? Are they drugged up? I mean, it's just, it was one of those things where you shoot, I mean, you know, you double tap and you move on to the next target in training. You know, I, I learned, no, no, I'm going to empty 10 or 15 into you because 5.56 five, doesn't kill you right now. You know? Yeah. I'm going to have to hit something important and I'm going to keep looking for it till I find it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, were there just piles of bodies piling up? Uh, they would drag them back, um, you know? I mean, there was... The close in ones, sure, they would stay there, you know, and, and, and on the run out, the mile run out, I would see people dead laying around and shit. But yeah. the numbers that they were they're taking out with the little birds and the rockets and shit, I mean, they, they were hauling them away. I didn't get out to see the, if they were still there on the streets, you know, where they were trying to come in. But there, I mean, there weren't, I didn't see, it wasn't stacks of bodies. It was just, I know that they were dragging people back. Yeah. And I know the hospitals, you know, you could hear the radios, the hospitals were filling up. Yeah. Um, did you guys? Did any of you guys run out of ammo? Yeah, we all did. I know I did. Yeah. I, I had my knife on the bed at one point. Like fuck, wow. you know. And then we got an ammo resupply, which exploded in the street. We're out there trying to scrap up, you know, ammo out of the dirt, and then pass it around, and then ran out again. And so when I ran out the next morning, I probably had one mag left, and I emptied that. And I was picking up magazines on the road. There'd be three, and I'd knock dirt out of it, stick it in my weapon, and you know, and shoot at whatever I saw, and then find another mag down the street and there'd be one or two or three in it and knock the dirt out and use it, you know, until I got back to the Humvee finally and we loaded up. I'm like, all right, you're going to go in this Humvee, you're going to head this way, you know, there's tanks and Pakistani BMPs and shit everywhere. And, and I was like, all right, I feel good now. There were tanks launching into the streets and I was like, whoa, I've never seen tanks shoot before, man. They were just shooting at everything and um, grab more ammo on the, on the vehicle. And that's That was the first time we actually had back up to a basic load and that was on our way out. Wow. What was the, the period for you guys from, from your uh, situation of, of when you finally were able to leave uh, that, that intersection? Like the, what, period, the period of time? No, uh, I mean, what, what happened? Like, what was the, the box that needed to be checked for you guys to be able to bail out of it? We had to get the pilots. The pilot bodies were pinned underneath the aircraft. They blown through the windshield. And they landed on top of them. And so we couldn't get the bodies out. So we... Once the, the Pakistani two vehicles made it to our position, the rest stayed about a mile away. They couldn't get into the city. They didn't want to. You know, you don't want to take armor into the city. <laughs> and they, uh, they made it to us, so we used those vehicles to pull the vehicle up while we pulled out the body parts that we could get and load them on top. So that's, that's why we wouldn't leave. We wouldn't leave the bodies behind. Yeah. So once you recover them, you make the mile. Was the mile out treacherous? 
you know, where you're getting shot at. Yeah, stuff. all along the way. I mean, I almost get hit by an RPG. A guy in front of me got hit. I mean, I, I literally, from the target house, we went back south and made it was going to make a right back east the way we came. And uh, I knew the helicopter was laying there, and I knew they were going to rocket it with an Apache. So as soon as we hit that intersection and turned, I turned because I saw the Apache flip. You know, and I was like, I'm going to watch this. Like, I want to see what it looks like. And they, they didn't launch him. And all of a sudden, I turn, you know, I waited enough. And I was like, I'm, all right, fine, it's not going to happen. Not while I'm here. And I turned and looked, and nobody was on the street. And I'm like, I fucked around. I fucked around. I just took off running. And then a guy jumps out of a, a little inlet along the walls and jumps out and goes in here. And he pushes me in there. And right then, an RPG hits the wall as he's coming in. And it kind of fucked his ear up, you know. But he hooked me up and saved me from that. But all the way out, there were people firing everywhere. You know, one of the city incidents where you don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. But you get shit will skip off the walls, off the ground. You're like, like I'd love to shoot somebody, but I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. You know? And you're down to a mag at that point. Yeah. And I don't want to waste them. Yeah. You know? So it's just, it's like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. I can't shoot anybody when I can't see them, even if you're getting shot at. So, yeah. uh, so once you finally made it out uh, through that mile, uh, what, what happened after that? Did you guys end up going back? Yeah. We, the plan was to go back to the Pakistani stadium, which was close in town and secure. Um, all the tanks, all the Bradleys and, and, and the Humvees would go there. At 10th Mountain, had Pakistanis, um, Malaysians there. <laughs> and it was one of those, you guys load up and then Humvee. Okay. And so two Humvees just took off. I don't know where I'm going, man. You know, I'm just, I'm in the back. I'm happy. You know, and we just go and we're just shooting all along the way. And then finally we cross that, that line where the good clan and the bad clan, and oh, by the way, don't kill anybody anymore. They, they like us. And it's like, okay, so nobody's taking fire. And it's just us two. And every intersection we came up on with the burning tires and shit and people shooting at us, we just kept shooting back. And, I, and they were like, what do we do? I got to just blow through it. Don't stop, man. Don't ever stop. Made it back through the port to the back gate of the airport. And nobody was there but two Humvees. And I sat there for like 30 minutes. And had no radios. The radios were dead. I'm like, nobody's coming. I don't know. Why I'm all dead. It can't be. You know, I didn't know that they all had gone to the Packy Stadium. And we got lost. I found out last year when I did a post or something of a picture of this Humvee that I sat on, some 10th Mountain guy wrote me, go, that was my Humvee. And we, we went there because I did a post about, I have no, no why I ended up here, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said, we got lost. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, good to know. All these years later, we got lost. And uh, he goes, that's why we went. We went what we knew. We went back to the gate we knew, and, uh, but we didn't know where we were going. So we, got, we just did that. Wow. So everybody else um, went to the Packy Stadium and were flown back. And so I was sitting in the hangar waiting. I didn't know what had happened yet. I, I knew when we pulled in, I saw uh, on, on the road, right before I entered our compound, there's like 12 bodies laid out on the streets covered with ponchos and shit. And I saw the boots, and brown, 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 black Adidas salt boots, brown, brown, black Adidas salt boots. I'm like, what the fuck? Those are all bodies, and they're ours. And then we pulled into our compound, and there were Humvees just parked in different angles, full of blood with sand all over the ground where they'd pulled people in all night from the, trying to reach us. And then I realized, you know, how bad the night was, not just for us, but for everybody. And then the, they all started flying back in. All I was doing was reloading my weapon, cleaning it, and then I started hearing about so-and-so's missing, so-and-so's missing. You know, I'm like, fuck, we have people missing? This is like real movie army shit, you know, where I used to say, how do, you, how do, how do people go missing? How do you have a missing in action guy? You know, I mean, how do you do that? You always account for somebody, right? Left and right. And I realize how easy it is to go missing, you know, um, and not know where anybody is. So did you guys go keep going back in and, and continue to fight after that? And they wouldn't let us. Uh, <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Yeah. We were, um, they brought another squadron over. Yeah. We were decimated, um, but we were ready to go back. We wanted to. And yeah. The command's like, no, you can't. Your, this vengeance is not going to happen for you, you know. Yeah. The black Adidas assault boots were unit guys? Yeah. yeah. You lost two? More, but that's what I saw laying there. Yeah. yeah. How many uh, Delta guys total were, were there? Were there? Mm. And, and in on it, I um, guess. Maybe 40. Oh, wow. Maybe. So, I mean, uh, that's uh, like an entire squadron was there? Yeah. yeah, yeah, the whole squadron was there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the ranger, you know, but um, maybe, maybe 40. Yeah. And how, how many total were lost? 18. Delta guys? No, no. Del six. Six. I think, it was, I think it was 18 total. Yeah. Um, this may se seem like a silly question. Um, 
not bringing any water in, did you not have a, a drop of water that entire time? Out of the pipe that came out of the yeah. wall, man. Flower pots and shit. I was dumping those on iodine tablets everywhere. You know, just here's a couple of iodine tablets. Shake yeah. it and drink that shit, man. It was just it's disgusting. Yeah. But, you know, if you, if you got a night and you think, you know, what if I shit my pants? Who cares? You know, yeah. I'm thirsty. Yeah. It was it was just that. But it was just dripping. And then I was taking the, the flower pots and shit. What yeah. it was left after pouring them on the couch that caught fire from the RPG, you know, trying to put that fire out. But, yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, it was all out of the pipe in the wall, man. I, yeah. I was I don't know that anybody had water. Yeah. Um, so they wouldn't let you go back and fight. How how long did you guys, you personally and as a unit, stay in country before you came back home? The other squadron stayed a little longer. We went home maybe two or three weeks later at the most. In that two to three week period, what, what were you guys doing? Um, training with the other squadron, like, Hey, we'd go out to an old Bannon village or something on the beach, you know, and, 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 and do hits with them. And it was funny. You could watch, you could see the two different squadrons doing the hit and you could look over here and like C squad and you can see shit guys were down crawling upstairs below the walls and you know, not the bullshit standing by the wall and looking in the window. And you could look at the other squad and they're like pieing off windows and shit like that don't work. That shit yeah. doesn't work anymore, man. Yeah. So you could see the difference of people who had just gotten their asses shot up and people who had, had not had that done with them, yeah. um, even during training right then. But we were passing on as much as we could, um, getting them set up for what they could do, and then we packed up and left. And then they didn't stay much longer after that either. Morale-wise for, for your squadron, were you guys pretty pretty beat up? Man, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure we were. Uh, you know, it just goes so fast. Um, I know I was sad. I was beat up. A couple of days later on the 6th when Matt Ryerson got killed with the mortar round that landed, you know, right after the memorial ceremony for all the others who were killed and wounded more and killed, uh, well, killed Matt and wounded uh, our commander, Gary. And it was one and a couple other people. I had just walked by that spot when the mortar round hit, you know, and, and it chunk of it hit me in the leg and, and took a chunk out by my cot. And I went running back out there and found my friend who was hopping in. You know, he just got hit on his Achilles. And he's like, oh, and grabbed me and threw him on a cot. He's like, avenge me, avenge me. He's funny. Um, you know, and then, but then you could hear uh, our commander screaming. And then they moved us all into the bunker along the back because they were still mortaring. And you could hear him screaming. And I had my hands over my ears. I'm like, God, just fucking stop. You know, just stop. That was the most horrible screaming I'd ever heard. And it, yeah, it was just one of those, I'm going to go back. I want to go back out there and fuck everybody up, you know. Um, this is the anger that comes in, you know, when you when you taking a hit on the chin you want to you want to pay it back you know because we're america man shit doesn't happen right uh yeah. it was a good learning point for me and reality what uh wh why was your commander screaming he'd gotten the whole back of his body was just blown apart from the from the mortar round wow and he was laying there just bleeding out and they're trying to keep him alive and he, he lived um he just died recently oh, actually no of, uh, of a tumor but yeah